Hey guys, Mr. Schwanekamp here. Uh, today we are starting our triangles unit. Um, I figured I would record this a little bit beforehand, see if that helps any. I'm not going to do this every day, but for today I will just to get us kind of out in the open and make sure we understand what's going on. So triangles is something we learn in pre-calc. Um, it's a pre-calculus unit. And the reason we're teaching it now is because in calculus, um, it can be pretty difficult. And right now in school, we are learning the AP or we're taking the AP exams. So to try not to stress out students that are in class, uh, we're going to do this instead, uh, do a little bit easier of a chapter, get a little bit better understanding, and, and then allow us to kind of finish the year without our brains melting with everything else. So that's kind of the goal here with this. A lot of this you've already seen in geometry. So if you're doing this and you're like, hey, I know what's going on. Wonderful. I think you should at least a little bit, especially today. Today is something we've kind of implicitly done each time, but now we're going to explicitly do it, meaning we're going to talk specifically about it. All right, so we're starting off in bell work here. We are talking about just right triangles. How would we find missing sides, right? We know about Pythagorean theorem. We do that all the time. But if I've got two sides, how do I find the third, okay? Uh, today, we're dealing with all right triangles today and tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do some Sokotoa, okay? That's going to be the main idea. And so the important part when we do Sokotoa is you have to know two out of three things. You got to talk about an angle and two sides and using those angle and two sides you've got to know two out of the three okay so that does not include the right angle the right angle is, is key to this as well we've got a right angle all right cool we've got a right angle that means we need at least one angle and two sides we need two out of the three so in this case we've got the 36 and the seven so based off of that i can solve for everything else right we know how to solve for the missing angle we've got 36 and 90 we subtract from 90, 180 degrees altogether, so that angle would be 54 degrees. From this 36 degree angles perspective, so from this perspective, this seven right here is the hypotenuse. This X right here is the adjacent side. And the Y right here would be the opposite. And so then it's just a matter of doing trig functions to find the missing parts. Like for example, if I wanna find the opposite side, I need to use the two, two out of the three that we know. So we're gonna use the hypotenuse. So remember our phrase here, it is so ka toa. So we are going to have the hypotenuse. So we've got H's. So we're either going to use sine or cosine. If I want to find the adjacent side, I'm going to do cosine, C A H. If I want to do the opposite side, I'm going to do sine, S O H. And so if I want to find the adjacent side, this would be my formula. It would be cosine because i'm doing adjacent so cosine of my angle is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse so if i wanted to solve that all i need to do is multiply both sides by seven boom that's going to be my answer so if you have a calculator you can do that um, we are now definitely going to be in degrees instead of radians so make sure you change your mode so we're going to change that thing to degrees boom boom we're doing cosine of 36 times 7. We type it in, we hit enter. Anytime we're talking about a side length, we're going to round that thing to two decimals. So 5.66 is this missing side for x, 5.66. If I want to find the opposite side, we're doing so. We're doing the sine of our angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it'd be that right there. Again, we're just doing sine of 36 times 7. Sine 36, close my parentheses, times 7. We type it in, we hit enter, 4.11. We're going to round to two decimals, 4.11. That is the opposite side. Boom, there's my answer. Notice that the hypotenuse is the longest side compared to the other two. That's what we're doing today. So if you remember how to do that, then today is going to be really easy uh, with everything we do. But that's going to be the basics of what's happening here. All right, let's go to notes. Again, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I'm going to turn off my video. That way I can write on this tablet like normal. All right, here we go. So if we're doing soak and toe, okay, find all the trig functions. So if we're doing sine, that is opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, I've got to move my chair back. Uh, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side from this angle, the opposite side is going to be 21. The hypotenuse is always going to be 29. 
If I'm doing cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So from this angle, the adjacent side means the one next to it that is not the hypotenuse. Over the hypotenuse, it's 29. And if I do tangent, tangent means opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is this 21 over the adjacent side, which is 20. Those are the setups. Those are the right angle ratios or trig ratios that you would get here. If you want to actually know the angle, you would need to get theta by itself. For, for each of these, to get rid of sine, we do inverse sine. So in my calculator, I would do inverse sine of 21 over 29. I type that into my calculator, 46.397 or 46.4 degrees. That's what theta is. That's not what I'm asking for here, but that's how we would solve it. Same thing here. If I wanted to get theta by itself, I'd do inverse cosine. Well, guess what? If I do inverse cosine of that angle, I'm going to get the exact same answer because it's doing the same thing, just using different angles. That's how we set up our trig ratios. You could do it again. I'm going to go real quick. This is my angle. This is my hypotenuse. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent because it's next door. Hypotenuse is the longest one. Opposite's across from it. Adjacent is next to it, and it's not the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it'd be 28 over 35. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's 21 over 35. And tangent is... Uh, opposite over adjacent, so it'd be 28 over 21. Think about this. If we rotated this angle so that the angle was on the bottom left-hand corner, okay, or if it's on the inside, if this is my theta, then this would be what my triangle looks like, 21, 28, and 35. It's just a matter of rotating it. And we can do tangent from what we know. What does tangent mean? Tangent means y over x. And if we're doing y over x, oh yeah, it's 28 over 21. So this is what we did from before, we're just using different language, right? If we're up here, we got sine, it's y over r. Well, my y is 21, my r is 29. It's the same setup. It's just a matter of looking at the picture from a different angle and rotating that thing around a little bit. All right, so let's go down below. We're solving for the missing piece. So for this guy right here, we've got our angle. We know a side that's going to be the hypotenuse. We want to find x. That is the adjacent side. So adjacent and hypotenuse, we're doing cosine. So it is cosine of 55 equals x over 18. If I want to get x by itself, multiply by 18, multiply by 18. So in my calculator, I'm taking 18 times cosine of 55. Boom, 10.32. Anytime we're talking about side lengths, we're going to three des or two decimals. 10.32 is my answer, which makes sense. It's less than 18. My 18 is hypotenuse. So on this guy. We've got this angle right here. That's what we're looking for. This side is the opposite side, and this side is the adjacent side. So which trig function does opposite and adjacent? It's tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. I want to get theta by itself, so what do I need to do? Inverse tangent. Opposite, which was 16 over adjacent. Inverse tangent of 16 over 15, 46.8 five degrees and when we do angles this is a little bit weird but when we do angles we're going to round to one decimal side lengths we round to two angles we round to one why do we do that because it allows us to easily see if it's a side length or an angle without too much headache next one here's my angle this side is the opposite side this side is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle so then we are doing sine of my angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Then we want to get x by itself, so you could multiply both sides by x and then divide by sine of 67. So basically, it's like flipping the x and the sine of 67. That's what we need to do. So 24 divided by sine of 67. 24 divided by, boom, 26.07. It is a side length, so we're going to go to two decimals. Good there. Next one, last one. We got this angle. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. It is cosine of y is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. How do I get y by itself? 
inverse cosine. Second cosine, 18 over 20. Type it in, hit enter, 25.84. And it's an angle, so we'll go one decimal. 25.8 degrees. Hopefully that's making sense. We're just running right down the line. When we name our triangles, you can name them different things based on different setups. The grown-up version of doing this is sides are going to be letters, lowercase a, b, and c. And just depending on the textbook, they do different things. In regular geometry, you probably use capital A, capital B, and capital C as your angles. And that's totally fine. But as we get into advanced math, instead of capital A, capital B, and capital C, they will use the Greek letters. So they will use alpha, beta, and gamma. All right. All right. So just be ready for that. C is always going to be across from gamma. Side B is always going to be across from beta. And side A is always going to be across from alpha. So if we're drawing a triangle here, it would look like this. Um, oh, and these are right triangles. So one thing that I'm telling you here that these are right triangles. So if they are right triangles, which uh, letter C is always going to be the right angle. Okay, so they would have to tell us that first. But let's go ahead and do this. So this right here is the right angle. So if it's the right angle, then C is going to be across from it. And we're going to call that gamma. It doesn't matter which one you call which. Just based on my picture. B is pretty small, so this is going to be 20 degrees. Or that's beta, sorry. So this is letter B. That makes this alpha and this letter A. And then from there, you can solve it however you want. We've got alpha. I'm sorry, we got beta and gamma. So the next easiest thing to probably solve for here is alpha because alpha is just an angle. All you'd have to do is do take 180 minus 20 minus 90, and that would tell me that my missing angle is 70. And then from there, you can set up some different trig ratios to solve. So like um, we've got this angle for sure. And I know that B is 5. So this is the opposite. So you could set something up like sine of 20 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So you could multiply by C and solve for that one. That's going to allow you to solve for C. Or you could do tangent and, and you can do I guess tangent of 20 equals the opposite over the adjacent you could also use Pythagorean theorem I'm not going to solve that whole thing but that would be our setup next one if we were drawing a picture on this one again I'm just going to draw the most basic right triangle that is going to be gamma so that makes this C right there if we find a we'll call this guy a just for the sake of E's, that's A, so that makes this alpha, that makes this beta, and this side B. So again, we could do Pythagorean theorem to find beta. We could set up something to solve for, for one of these angles. So you could either use alpha or beta. Let's use beta. So if I'm doing beta, it'd be cosine of beta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So 7 over 15. So in my calculator, I could do inverse cosine and solve the rest of the way. If you need more help with solving right triangles, I'll gladly give you more. I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir there, though. I think we understand what's going on. Angle of elevation, that is the angle from the ground up. The other phrase you will hear is like the angle of depression. That is the angle from like looking out down. So this right here would be the angle of depression. The angle of elevation is from the ground up as you work through things. All right, let's do one more. A ship offshore from a vertical cliff is known to be 100 feet high. So we've got a cliff. You have a ship offshore. So let's draw the shore. And we got a ship. Boom. The cliff is 100 feet high. So this is 100 feet. You are taking a siding of the top of the cliff. So a ship is taking a siding of the top of the cliff. So it's looking like that. Somebody's standing on the boat and looking up. If the angle of elevation is found to be 25 degrees, so that angle right there is 25 degrees, how far offshore is the cliff? Cliff. So that is our X. So we've got an angle that we know, we've got a side that we know, and we're searching for a missing side. 
So what is that 100? Well, that is the opposite side. What is this X that we want? That's our adjacent. So it's going to be tangent of 25 equals the opposite over the adjacent. Boom, there's our setup. Multiply by X. Divide by tangent of 25. How far away are you? Oh, uh, 100 divided by tangent of 25. Type it in. Hit enter. Boom, 214.45 feet. That's how far away the boat is from the shore. Let's draw the picture, label some stuff, and then do, use some Sokotoa. Tomorrow in class, we are going to do some story problem practice on our own, so you won't see a video from me tomorrow. Uh, but that's going to give you the basic setup of what's happening from there. Keep staying up to date. Nothing incredibly difficult. I'll try to throw some Khan Academy practice on here as well. That way you can work through it. You got questions? Let me know. Thanks, guys.